hippos that surf, a monkey that runs like a savanna predator, an ape that's almost human, and a hidden forest animal that holds a clue to one of Africa's biggest mysteries. This is Africa, but as you've never seen it. The West African coast of Gabon. On the equator is a mysterious wild paradise. On its beaches, forest buffalo look for food. Rainforest vegetation is washed out by tropical rains onto the sandy beaches. The buffalo seek mangrove pods, which contain high concentrations of minerals. But they have company. It's an African icon, the hippopotamus. The hippos of Luango National Park in Gabon are beachgoers. They seem to be at home in the surf, but they're actually on the move. These creatures have learned to use ocean currents to move from one beach lagoon to another in search of food. It's not the only African icon at home on the beach. These elephants are different in other ways too. It was only in 2010 that science confirmed that these elephants were in fact a whole new species. Forest elephants, as they are called, are on average two to three feet smaller than their savanna cousins. 45,000 of them live here in Gabon's forests, one of their last strongholds. In the elephant world, being large confers benefits in harsh, dry environments. The equatorial rainforests drive the evolution of animals in surprising ways. Further east along the equator from Gabon is the heart of the Congo Basin, home to the second largest rainforest on Earth. Here, a seemingly iconic ape lives in complete isolation. It looks like a chimpanzee, but in fact, thanks to the influence of the rainforest, it's a cousin called the bonobo. Bonobos are also distinguished by pink lips, a darker face, and longer hair on its head. Bonobo societies are different too, run by females who don't compete for dominance or rank. But the biggest difference is aggression. They prefer peace, not war, like their chimp cousins. And this is all due to their rainforest home.
Here, the bonobos have access to immense nutrient-rich environments. With little need to compete for food, able to share their spoils among the groups. Although chimpanzees are widespread across equatorial Africa, unlike bonobos, they can also live in the drier deciduous forests and grasslands. The food they eat is scarcer, so they aggressively compete for it. And tribes of chimpanzees will attack and kill each other. They will even kill a weakened member of their own community. The peace-loving bonobos are a unique example of how the rainforest environment creates adaptations in species. The tropical rainforests are created by the eight feet of rain that falls here annually. But what causes this great deluge on equatorial Africa? When the cold Benguela ocean current from the south meets the warm Guinea current from the north, the moist air condenses, bringing spectacular amounts of rain to the Gabon. But travel further eastwards, and a distinct change occurs. Rainforests give way to sparse woodlands. And finally, to great savannas. This is rare on the equator. Most equatorial regions in other parts of the world are wet and covered in jungles, like the Congo. But here on the savanna, the little rain that falls isn't enough to sustain vast forests. Grasslands dominate this five million square mile sized area. It's the rain shadow of the Kenyan highlands that produces this arid ecosystem. It's late October, the peak of the dry season. It hasn't rained in months. Only a few hardy species can endure this unforgiving landscape. Vultures ride the powerful rising heat waves. Wide open plains give them a clear view of prey. In the dry months, nature's garbage collectors are always in business. But they're being watched. An African lioness has her eyes trained on them. She knows that soaring vultures land only for one thing, food. Even the lions here aren't above scavenging, especially at this time of the year. These big cats of the equator's plains scavenge as much as half of all their food, much higher than lions from other parts of the continent. While many animals migrate, the lions remain on the savanna throughout the four-month-long drought. Thompson's gazelles may stay as well. Pursuits often end in failure for the lions. Each chase saps precious energy, especially for mothers.
An adult must eat around 20 pounds of meat a day, any less, and they will get into a spiral of starvation. The long dry season is extremely taxing for the cubs. It's believed that up to 70% of them may starve to death during this time. But starvation is not the only threat the cubs face. This lone hyena is on the lookout for an easy meal. He strayed too far into the pride's territory, but he doesn't know it yet. Without his clan to back him up, he might be in deep trouble. It's said that in Europe, if you stand somewhere quiet, The savannah is also home to a very unusual primate that walks the plains like a wild dog or a big cat. Olive baboons have adapted to live across 25 equatorial countries. They've developed the ability to subsist on grasses for extended periods of time. This dry environment is not conducive to most other primates who lead arboreal lives. This species of baboon are not strict vegetarians. They will consume meat too. Spending so much time on the ground, they hunt for prey like other carnivores on the savannah. Every waterhole and grassland savanna requires a rainy season to replenish. In December, rainfall eventually comes to eastern Africa. Winds bring evaporated water from the Indian Ocean to the east, which condenses over the Serengeti. Some rainfall originates from Lake Victoria as well. It also results in the largest overland migration in the world. The rains renew dry pastures, which attracts herbivores in their millions. These animals will travel 500 miles looking for grasses to feed on. The chaotic herd possess an almost swarm intelligence as they overcome obstacles as one. Different herbivores, like zebra and wildebeest, can graze in harmony as they eat different parts of the same types of grass. But the grasses soon run low, and the massive herd needs to find new pastures. And a deadly obstacle lies ahead. The wildebeest are nervous, and rightly so. The Mara River is 250 miles long. Its source is in the Kenyan mountains and is vital to the dry grasslands in this region. But it also harbors monsters, Nile crocodiles. However, for the wildebeest, rain and fresh grass beckons. They must take a chance. For every wildebeest that gets killed, 50 more drown on their own.
Even though the river claims thousands, the fatalities only account for 0.5% of the total herd each year. Further ahead, the clouds eventually burst, bringing life-giving water. The change is sudden. for less than an hour and stops. Large amounts of rain falls in this short period. Not enough time for the ground to absorb it all. Every day brings a short, hard downpour. This pattern will repeat for several weeks until eventually the land is completely transformed. The barren ground is replaced with fresh new grass. The herds of the Great Migration arrive just in time. Almost two million wildebeest, gazelles and zebra feast on the bounty. They've not only timed their migration with the rains, but with births too. But this is a dangerous time for mothers and newborns alike. Hungry eyes are watching. Lions have waited months for this windfall. And they aren't the only ones. On the equatorial savannas of Africa, long-awaited rains have brought on a flood of a different kind. A baby boom. Wildebeest calves are all born within just one month. At its peak, 12,000 calves are born every single day. In just 30 minutes, these newborns can walk and are able to follow their mothers a vital skill that they must learn quickly, for predators lurk nearby. This Thompson's gazelle and her newborn are in real danger. Hungry golden jackals watch their every move. Adult gazelles are much larger than the jackals and can reach speeds of 40 miles an hour. They're built to outrun most predators on the savanna. But the fawn is vulnerable. Foiled for now. Half of all jackal hunts on gazelles end in defeat. They must be patient. A stray fawn. Without mother's protection, it's in grave danger. Timing is everything. The chase is on.
But the gazelles are feisty. The hunter becomes the hunted. This is all part of the plan. While one jackal distracts the adults, the others target the fawn. The adult gazelles finally catch on and turn round to help. But it might be too late. The brave mother tries again and again. But this time, the jackals have the upper hand. Working as a team, they keep the distraught mother at bay. Only half of all fawns will ever reach adulthood. With so many carnivores around, only the strongest and best protected will survive. Many small animals have developed unique strategies to stay one step ahead of the predators. Kirk's Dick Dick is a species of dwarf antelope native to eastern equatorial Africa. To combat the intense heat, they've evolved a proboscis-like snout, which works like a radiator in reverse by cooling blood before it travels to the brain. Clip springers. These antelopes have their own way of dealing with predators in an environment that's difficult to hide in. They inhabit granite outcrops, rocky embankments, mountain escarpments, anywhere they can find refuge from savanna carnivores. They've developed special hooves that provide extra grip for rock climbing, making it difficult for predators to follow them. One thing all of these vulnerable animals can rely on at this time of the year is getting lost in the crowd. The birthing season means the plains are swamped with vast numbers of vulnerable prey all at once. But carnivores won't spend energy to hunt if they're not hungry. Well-fed hunters mean that many are given a reprieve. At the height of the equator's wet season, the savanna is home to 30 herbivore species, numbering in their millions. Each has its own niche in the delicate ecosystem and ways to avoid predators. This has shaped the evolution of their main predators at the equator, the big cats. As antelopes got better at avoiding predators, they had to change and adapt to catch them. The leopards of equatorial Africa's savanna hunt very differently from those of its forests. The grassland cat spies its prey from the vantage point of a tree. Ideally, it would prefer to hunt at night. But it's also not one to miss out when careless prey come calling. In the grass, it's a silent 
careful stalker, slowly working its way into range. The leopard won't consume its kill here. There may be others who might steal it. The tree is the safest spot. The trees are few and far between on the savanna, but the leaves of the acacia provide sustenance to the tallest mammal here, the giraffe. In the deep jungles of the equatorial Congo Basin, there's another leaf eater that is the missing link to an ancient mystery. How the giraffe evolved such a long neck. We've gone further so you can explore the wilderness. Discover hidden depths. Experience the isolation. Towers at more than six feet tall. The tallest animal in the world is perfectly adapted for survival on the equatorial savanna. One theory suggests that the loss of tropical forests forced giraffes to evolve a longer neck. It's the only way they could access the highest leaves of the few tall trees that grow here. Acacia leaves are full of nutrients, but they're protected by three inch long thorns. Plucking the tender leaves is a delicate art, a skill the young calf will have to learn quickly to survive. Thick bumps on the giraffe's tongue called papillae protect their mouths from injury, and the dark purple color stops sunburn. Giraffes can easily reach high into the trees, but bending down to drink is more difficult. It's not just that it looks awkward. A giraffe should get a sudden rush of blood to their head. But special veins stop too much blood going to the brain. Lots of features about the giraffe are bizarre, including the bumps on their head. These are called ossicones and are a clue to how they evolved on the dry equatorial plains. Deep in the Western Congolese equatorial rainforest lives the only other creature on Earth that has ossicones too, the okapi. Looking like a cross between a horse and a zebra, it's actually a distant cousin of the giraffe. They both share a common ancestor that died out millions of years ago. It's thought the Akapi resembles this ancestor more closely. Meanwhile, the direct ancestor of the giraffe adapted to the drying out of the grassland savannas by evolving a long neck. Another supersized icon of the savanna, the African bush elephant, also evolved to cope with the sparse vegetation in this dry region. These elephants can grow to become almost twice as heavy as their forest-dwelling cousins of West Africa. In the dry season, smaller animals will starve more easily. The elephant, which has a longer digestive system that can extract nutrients from woody vegetation, is more likely to survive. 
they also find food sources others can't access. Using their powerful tusks, they peel away tree bark. All trees here are fair game. It's a source of roughage and helps in digestion. More importantly, they also remember where the best feeding grounds are and pass on this knowledge to their offspring. The secret is down to their large brains, which gives them extraordinary intelligence and memory. Hippos have grown large to exploit the conditions, but with one big difference. Lakes and rivers are their habitat of choice. Underwater, they are able to close their nostrils, allowing them to stay submerged for more than five minutes. Out of water, they'd risk rapid dehydration and overheating. But like many species at the equator, they've evolved a way to combat this. Their skin produces a thick, oily fluid, which helps them to keep it moist. It's also a natural sunblock. Like elephants, their large body size is more efficient, which increases their chances of survival. The change that brought drier conditions to equatorial East Africa attracted many predators to adapt and evolve to survive. But one well-known animal was pre-evolved to exploit dry and big open grasslands full of fast elusive prey that often outrun lions. The sprinter of the plains, the cheetah. Cheetahs aren't true big cats. They lack a floating hyoid bone, which means this spotted predator chirps rather than growls to communicate. Cheetahs are actually related to pumas, evolving in the Americas before migrating through Asia to find a niche on the dry African plains like equatorial East Africa. This spotted cat isn't great at climbing trees, so to have a better view of the grassland, they make do with termite mounds. Forward-facing eyes help lock onto prey, even at a distance. And then it's liftoff. Three seconds in, and the cheetah is hurtling along at close to 60 miles per hour. Semi-retractable claws and a flexible spine help it cover over 20 feet in a single stride. The teeth are small to allow the nasal cavity to be bigger to inhale more oxygen. Tap tackling helps too. but it can only run at these speeds for around a distance of 300 yards before it overheats. The cheetah is a skilled hunter, but its body is not built for battle. It must eat quickly before the scent of fresh blood wafts across the grasslands. On the savannah, fresh kills have many takers. The lion is the largest cat here. Unlike other big cats, lions live in large family groups or prides. They are the only true social cats. 
The male stands over four feet high and can weigh up to 500 pounds, 200 pounds heavier than the average linebacker. The male also has a thick mane around its neck, which protects it during territorial fights with other males. Further east in Savo National Park, the lions here are living at their very limit of survival. Looking for shade is their number one priority. But even here, it's nearly 90 degrees in the shade. Out in the open, it's a lot hotter. Lions don't have sweat glands. Their only means of cooling is by panting. And uniquely, in this hot equatorial region, the male's manes are greatly reduced in their thickness and coverage. The lion's mane raises body temperature in Kenyan lions, so they've traded off a symbol of dominance and protection to keep cooler. Instead of having a more luscious mane, the alpha male has a darker one to indicate his status. Lions here will hunt at night due to the extreme heat. After dark, it drops to 60 degrees. But if their prey wanders too close, they might reevaluate this. Savo lions have also evolved to become larger than other African lions. This enables them to tackle their main prey, the Cape buffalo, probably the most aggressive herbivore in Africa. <laughs> Bringing down a large buffalo weighing over half a ton is hugely taxing. So it's imperative the pride does it swiftly in numbers. The most powerful lion clamps down on the buffalo's windpipe and throttles it. Death usually comes quickly. But for the smaller species of lions, the modus operandi is twofold. Target smaller prey and use the cover of darkness to attack. This March on National Geographic Network, the critically acclaimed air crash investigation takes you beyond the cockpit. Mayday, mayday. To uncover the truth behind recent high-profile aviation disasters. These Alaskans swap the rat race for a life of freedom in the brutal Alaskan wilderness. Everything out here wants you to fail. It's natural selection. They have white patches under their eyes to reflect moonlight. Once prey is identified, they are slowly and quietly surrounded. Two lions flush out the prey. In the dark, the gazelles are quickly disorientated and run in the opposite direction. But the trap is well set. They run straight into the waiting lionesses concealed in the long grass. The kill is shared among the pride. While the lionesses hunt and raise cubs, the male's mission is to protect his pride from other males who might attempt to overthrow him. His territory can extend from 8 to 150 square miles. Remarkably, his roar can be heard up to five miles away. As he patrols, he leaves scent marks as a warning. No prey is safe under the cover of night. Darkness allows lions to get closer without being seen. And of course, it's cooler. 
The enjoyment of the feast is short-lived, as they're being stalked by hyenas. The lionesses appear unsettled, and the hyenas aren't backing down. They scatter in the face of so many snapping jaws. The females eventually return with the cubs, despite the feeding male. Ultimately, successfully spreading his genes is his driving force in the harsh environment of Ecuador.